Hello and welcome to the Christmas edition of Cycling Weekly's Tech of the Month. And as you can see by our three faces, we are very happy to be here. And ho, Merry Christmas. Ho, ho. Merry Christmas, guys. Ho, ho, ho. That's my Alan Rickman impression <laughs> from Die Hard. Anyway, yes, we have, um, again, more product to show you. Uh, I'm going to go first this month because it's Christmas. I finally got the middle seat. This month, I have a set of, how gracefully can I do this, Zips and their Zip 454 NSWs, um, which made a bit of a splash. Um, <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> a bit of a splash uh, later last year, I think it was, when they were launched. Um, and basically, Zip have used the ever-growing science of biomimicry. They looked at the pectoral fins of humpback whales and the skin of sharks and how effortlessly they change their speed and direction um, underwater and they're kind of bringing that idea into these wheels. So yeah, so Zip have designed these um, after looking at those particular animals. Uh, the tubercles the on whales. Yep. Uh, and found that they could reduce overall drag and help increase stability. But for to sort of explain the science behind it, I'm going to have to turn to our scientist. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Oliver Bridgewood. Zip's gone pretty heavy on the marketing with these wheels. They have, big time. And they've made a lot of claims. But in summary, these tubercles inspired these little nodules on the, on the wheel there, make the wheel more aerodynamically stable. So Zip claim. And this means that at higher yaw angles of wind, um, a normal wheel profile will be more prone to stalling. And when the wheel stalls, uh, sort of a couple of things happen. Firstly, you often notice like the uh, twitchy and it's like catches the wind, that feeling. Buffing, basically. Yeah. But also, um, when the wheel's getting a bit of your angle going on, the wind's coming from the side, it can actually create a sailing effect, which is really beneficial. And you actually start being much more aerodynamically efficient when the wheels are sailing. And that's when you feel wheels like sort of holding their speed. Mm. These wheels should be better, according to Zip, at holding that sailing effect because they're better at higher yaw angles. So that's in go. simple terms what Zip is sort of. Thinking. Good. And I think to a certain degree, you know, they've done a good job with these. Um, I haven't spent too much time with them just yet. And they've got a the cool cognition hub set as well. Yes. And so they plan, well, they claim that they reduce the mechanical drag of that um, over the conventional three paw um, engagement. Um, which is good, and it has a nice little... It must be good quite, sound. quite like that. deep. It has a very deep sound. Bassy, that, yeah. Um, which I quite like. Uh, as well as improved braking surface. They are a very expensive set of wheels, though. Um, so you're looking at just over 1500 for the front and just over 1800 for the rear. So you are looking at mega money for... Mega money. Santa has been very generous. To me, he has, yeah. Who's up next? I'll go. Ollie B. Right, I've brought something. This is a tech exclusive, right? Pretty cool, this. So, uh, this Belgian man called Jan Dex invented a free hub body that detached from the wheel separately, so you could leave your cassette in the bike when you took the wheel out. And he was on about faster wheel changes, and there's a few advantages to this system. Yeah. Anyway, since then, he's been working with Ridley and he's been coming up with a few different projects. And one of them is this, a new through axle system, which the UCI, according to Jan, has approved. So there's a good chance we're gonna see it on bikes. And he's been working with Ridley on this. So where it differs from a traditional through axle is that Jan reckons that you can change the through axle, take the wheel out in just less than a second. So what you do is you do that, this little noggin, Right, that screws into the, into the bike frame and then you just simply pop in your through axle like this, like that. And then you press this button down and you pull it out like that, quick as that. So I'll put it in a bike and show you how it works in the bike. We'll do it on the Van Nicholas here. But, but that should, that could be faster than tr tr traditional quick release, couldn't it? Yeah, so you'd still have to operate the lever. Yeah and undo the lever, but then as soon as you've done the lever, which is just a cam lever, you just pull it out, push it back in. But it would always be set in the right place. This is, this is the thing. Once, 
once that side is screwed into yeah. the right hand side of the bike, it's like, bam in. The, the idea of it is, is great. But I don't think you guys realise how exclusive this is. It's literally landed on our desk yeah. like 10 minutes before doing this, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's pretty crazy. Um, but I think it's a great idea. So you saw it here first. But yeah, this could be the future of through axle design. But let us know in the comments what you think of this and if you think this is the kind of thing that will take off. So this is just a prototype right now. I've got the rear one here as well. It's obviously longer. Jan tells me that he's going to be looking to make them out of uh, titanium as well to make them lighter. But yeah, pretty cool. Does look good. Cool. Does Very look interesting good. idea. Um, it's a nice little product. Short and sweet. Really? Rupert. Lovely. Roops. Go on, mate. It's me. And I've. this has also just landed on my desk today. Or well, these. The Garmin Vector Freeze. They're new power meter pedals from Garmin. Got to try and get into them now. This is like an unboxing. A little bit. So I'm just going to hijack this. Here they are. Look at them. Updated from the Vector 2s. Now, Ollie, you know a bit about these as well. I think you saw them at Eurobike. Yeah. And you're a big fan of the Vector 2s. Yeah, there's, there's a few big things, a few big changes from the, uh, the Vector 2s. So, firstly, yeah, the pods are gone, which is great because everyone was breaking the pods all the time. They're really fragile, they were very snapping fragile. off. They were paying those pods. And the other thing is, the big, big change is that now when you install them into your bike, you just screw them in with a pedal wrench. And before that, um, you had to set them with the old Vector 1, Vector 2. You had to really like be precise about the torque that you, you talked them to. Otherwise, they were completely inaccurate and were just wildly varying yeah. in the power reading. So. These are like now, it's taken the lead from the PowerTap P1 pedals. You just screw them in, whatever torque, it doesn't matter, they work. Yeah. Which is great. It's cool. And I'm quite excited about these because I don't ride with power really that often. Mm -hmm. It's not something I've ever really done before. So this is quite exciting for me. Give it a go. How much are we going to pay for these? You are going to pay £849 for these. That is competitive for dual-sided power. Yeah, and then so. there is also the 3S models that come in a little bit below that. Can't remember off the top of my head, but you don't get quite as many fancy gizmos and gadgets with those. Sure. So do we know what were these weighing as well? We do. 323 grams for the pair. That's just like a set of pedals, really. Isn't well, it? yeah, like Jura Ace pedals, I think, are 249 yeah, that's not bad at all. grams so off, off the top of my head, I think. Yeah. So they're really stepping on, you know, the, what stages say as their USP is like lightweight. And I think the key things. thing for me on this product that will make it or break it is how durable it is. Yeah. Power me the power meter market right now, there's a lot of power meters out there and everyone's sort of starting to find that they do break. They you know, they're complicated electronic gizmos and they're subject to salt and water and all sorts of <laughs> so drops. For me now the the holy grail in power meters is durability and we need to just get these out. I mean, you're going to smash them through winter, hopefully, Rupert. Oh, yeah. Festive 500. Was all that. Try and break data. them. I want to go for that. <laughs> all of that. So, uh, yeah, and with that in mind, these have been updated. The, they've updated the design a little bit. So the design is now brought in-house at Garmin, whereas before it was put out. So they wanted to take, like, control of that. Needle bearings in there now. Um, and What's the battery? A coin cell, um, which they say will last... It's a 120-hour battery life. Cool. I think that concludes our three products, but it doesn't conclude Tech of the Month yet because we need to do Bike of the Month, which is, gentlemen, try not to look behind you, but it's the Van Nicholas Skiron. So Van Nicholas uh, used to be, back in the day, a family-run Dutch company um, that believe in titanium. Titanium is the best material to make bikes. And there's a lot of people that believe that, you know, um, a lot of guys think titanium is the most comfortable, it's the most luxurious, um, it's the best material to work with. However, it, it involves a lot of craftsmanship to produce and bond into a frame shape, as we all know. Um, but this Van Nicholas um, Skiron, um, is coming in complete in this build, uh, just over £6,000, which is a lot of money. Um, but it actually won the gold award at Eurobike 2017. Just under nine kilos for this bike, so it is a little bit weighty, um, but I don't think that weight's fully felt out on the ride. This one in particular has uh, flat mount disc brakes, 
Um, so it's completely modernised in that sense. Um, it's also got fully internal routed cables, um, which again is another nice touch. Um, just sort of hides everything in. Uh, equipped with Shimano Altegra, um, hydraulic disc brakes. Um, I can't say much more than it's one our bike of the month for December. But I think from the tech team here at Cycling Weekly, we wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. How's my hat? Does it look suitably silly? Basically, they've, they've looked to nature with these sets of wheels. Um, they've, I can feel my hat like bouncing around whilst I turn and look at you guys. It's, it's really annoying me. I am titanium, bulletproof, nothing to lose, far away, far away. It's a great song. Probably one of the best, really because they're probably titanium and titanium is quite unique. Anyway, well it's not that unique. Cool fact, chemistry fact time. Titanium is actually the ninth most abundant element in the Earth's crust. I don't even know what that means. What does that mean? How do you spell crust?